Okay, hi everyone, we are live, check it. It's Anthony from Enlightened Business Solutions and we're here today uh, to start our first episode of We Mean Business, a talk show made for small business owners and we'll be speaking with small business owners from around the country, uh, providing some valuable insights uh, and information about various topics where we expect the audience to get involved, comment and ask questions and uh, I'd like to make it clear that we uh, uh, don't have any agenda. I'm not a journalist. I'm a business owner, small business owner as well. I'm not affiliated with any political party or religious group. Um, all of our shows uh, will be streamed to Facebook, YouTube, Periscope. There's no cutting or editing. There's no mixing or scratching. It's all completely raw and unfiltered. If there's something you'd like to know about, um, as a small business owner, comment something through and uh, we'll be doing our best to provide that information for you. Um, with everything going on at the moment, we thought we'd start with a little mini segment on um, <clears throat> COVID-19, where we'll be hearing stories from business owners, how they feel going on in current times, how they're coping, uh, some of their mistakes, some of their successes, and an idea to help the small business community uh, sort of come together and uh, strengthen as we, as we come out of this as well. So with that being said, our first guest uh, is Edwin Almeida. Uh, I'll bring him into the stream. Good day, Edwin. How are you? Edwin from uh, uh, from Ribbon Property. I'm um, well, thanks, Anthony. And um, it's been a it's been a while, and it's great that we can catch up through the through the internet, given the fact that we haven't caught up uh, person to person. Yeah, it's fantastic. I think it's great that uh, having you on the show first. Um, for everyone who doesn't already know, Edwin and I have known each other for about ten years. Uh, a little bit longer maybe. And I think, you know, one of my first impressions of Edwin is uh, he had this kind of steely, uh, too cool for school, real estate kind of persona. But when you get to know him a bit better, you know, there was that softer side to him, you know. Uh, and when he opened up, he started telling those uh, those bad jokes uh, that I felt compelled to laugh at because he was paying for the coffee. Uh, and then over time, you get to know him a little bit more. And I think it's fitting to have you on the show first because, you know, something that I've known about you and kind of admired about you for a long time is I've always seen you as someone that's reinventing themselves, someone that's always looking at new ways to, to do better in business, uh, to do better, you know, the, the processes and your activities. And you're an innovator. Uh, you, you're an ideas man. And above all of that, you're an action man. You sort of get something in your head and you sort of run with it. And, you, and I think we need a lot more of that, uh, you know, these days, probably now more than ever. Um, and so maybe just start with, tell, tell us a bit more about yourself, your background. Um, you know, you've been in real estate since 2005, I, I think, or maybe just correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, a bit, bit, bit earlier than that, but um, yeah, well, we, it just uh, over a couple of decades, uh, a bit more than a couple of decades. Uh, it's, uh, well, times like this, you've got you've to learn and you've got to understand that you've got to duck and weave, reinvent yourself, uh, and you've got to take, um, take all adversities and, and everything that life throws at you by the by the neck and um, you know make it work for you rather than work against you uh, it's uh, it's been a, an, an interesting journey in the in the real estate and property in the property arena and I think right now the industry itself is going through some major major changes and I'd say these changes were already uh, in lieu anyway they has meant that, that, that it's got to happen. Uh, it's just um, facilitated the, what well, I would say, the need. Uh, uh, and and now we're, we're seeing the the expression of that need uh, live because a lot of the industry has had to adapt and adopt new technology in order to, in order to transact in business. Uh, you know, property inspections, um, uh, whether it be for sale, for, for lease, um, you know, auctions and, and so forth. So we've had to adopt, but that's always been, uh, as you said, that's always been my persona anyway, to to adopt new technology, adopt new ways of doing things and adapt. But, and there's going to be a lot of changes, not only in the real estate arena, but also with a lot of businesses in general. We're now finding out that uh, potentially 30, 40% of businesses don't necessarily, or business owners and uh uh, and workers don't necessarily need to go to to the city to work in the city. We've uh, found out 
in a in a doing a crash course that you can actually work from home and in in a lot of cases a lot of instances be more productive in working from home yeah that's great i mean for, apart from the real estate you mentioned other businesses what experience when you when you're out there sort of doing what you do what what, what other experiences have you had with other industries and, and what's it been like during these times Oh, look, I, I, as a business broker, not only as a real estate agent, but also as a business broker, I've come across, uh, I deal with a, with, a, with a number of businesses, a number of uh, associates and associated firms. My, my, business, my business model has changed from your traditional you know, mum and dad sales to, to now working more in line uh, with, um, with uh, align myself with, with lawyers, uh, with accountants, uh, and, and assisting people with their property transactions as well as with their business transactions. So one of the unfortunate things that we've seen of late, obviously, is, is trying to help and trying to see and facilitate how, how people are going to downsize. Um, and I say unfortunate is because, you know, they're finding that, uh, that they can't keep the, the number of employees that they have currently have. Uh, they've also got to downsize in terms of, um, in terms of uh, shop front or office front uh, or you know, they have to look at different ways in order to, uh, in order to save, to save money, in order to stay afloat. So it's rather interesting. Uh, retail is really getting, um, getting a hammering out there, and uh, so, so is the, uh, so uh, you know, is the hospitality industry, the coffee shops, restaurants, and the like. So it's quite interesting how, how, how things have uh, evolved quickly. But you know what, uh, COVID nineteen is really, I'd say the. the the um, straw that broke the camel's back, but because we were already seeing this uh, occurring, the, we were already seeing that quite a number of retail uh, outlets, a, a number of retail shops and uh, independent and franchise shops, as well as um, hospitality and you know, cafes, they were already in trouble for, for you know, one would say for over 12 months, 18 months, and they were starting to look at options anyway to, uh, as I was saying, to and, and small business operators to work from home as it was. Likewise, my industry, my industry has approximately eight and a half thousand offices in New South Wales. So uh, a lot of uh, a lot of us, uh, myself, for example, as you know, um, uh, uh, ran the office in Parramatta for quite a while. Now I've been working pretty much working from uh, from a home office and attending uh, another office that I uh, subcontract to, and and that has meant that I've cut down all my overheads. Pretty much, you know, leases, leases on cars, on vehicles, on equipment, machinery. Because I've had to adopt and adapt to to the changes and transition, uh, because uh, it was already going through some pain as it was. With you know, although the property owners were experiencing uh, great joys in in seeing the values of the properties go up, but the unfortunate thing was that the transaction volumes had dropped by almost 50%. And, when I mean, and that's where real estate agents make money is in the transaction uh, volumes, not so much in yeah. property values going up. Yeah, so you, you mentioned some of the ways you're changing your business. So how, how specifically are you changing what you do and how you do things differently during the current times? And then maybe a little bit on what you think the future might hold. Like once these lockdowns get lifted, what might what of what those still need to stay in place and what might change again? Well, prior to the prior to this happening, um, uh, the, the changes that were already happening with with, with a number of my uh, colleagues and myself was that um, we we weren't we, we weren't tied down to an office. Uh, as I said, we our licenses are tied down to a particular office, uh, but it, but that's yeah that's uh, a physical certificate that hangs on a wall in case uh, the regulators want to come around and inspect our files and the like, but. Everything else, uh, uh, transactions and, and business was actually happening in uh, cafes, uh, um, you know, and as you know, uh, even with yourself, as we've uh, uh, met up over the last few years anyway, we, we met up in cafes. Uh, I think you only came, in all the time that I've known you, Anthony, I think you only came to my office once uh, or maybe twice. Yeah, that was only and, twice. And, yeah. <laughs> and that was even when, when I had the office there at Paramount because everything, the, the office... Uh, the pseudo office became uh, coffee shops uh, and, and restaurants, uh, and transactions were at most of the transactions are happening occurring outside of offices, um, and so really 
realistically, the traditional models are changing and they've been changing dramatically. So this is so uh, having um, having greater or faster internet speeds and greater access to or tools that are available that can do things online that you can live stream online that you can talk with clients online through this platform through Skype, uh, Periscope, whatever the the, the medium of um, the medium of, of uh, you know utilizing these mediums to to talk and communicate has meant that a lot of the I think I've lost you. Did I lose you? Are you still there? No, I'm still here. Yeah. Yeah, so that was just my screen. I thought I thought it, uh, it went black. Um, so the mediums that we, we're using is um, they are now um, um, yeah, utilizing greater internet speed. So it's facilitated that. And a lot of the transactions, even look, even um, uh, legal documents uh, are now being um, transacted or shared across um, secure platforms in order to facilitate it. So. So the industry has to change, and I think the industry in itself, as you said, like that was already happening um, uh, with a lot of stresses, not only in the real estate industry, but in the, in a, quite a number of other industries. Financial planners, accountants. How many accountants work from home? How many financial planners are, are working from home offices? How many businesses can you think of that can operate from home as opposed to having a shop front and paying a lease? So, uh, because people don't necessarily travel to uh, your 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 yeah, your office or your your point of business. People want you to travel to them, and likewise with retail and um, and quite a number of other services. Uh, the mobile services are picking up. Um, yeah, you know, I think there's going to be a, a huge change in dynamics in, with regards to people even attending restaurants. As much as you like to attend a restaurant, as much as you like to go out, but um, the thing is, it's it's relatively uh, more cost effective and cheaper to get the restaurants now to deliver the food uh, to you. So I, I guess, yes, you can't have a, a romantic night out, uh, you know, and go into a restaurant and a candlelit dinner. But then again, can you have that at home? Can you facilitate that at home at a much cheaper cost, given the fact that now um, potentially there's going to be unemployment could rise to, you know, 15, 16, 17%. Who knows where, where, where that's going to end? So, Money's going to be tighter. Uh, we're going to look for solutions or or things that will facilitate us to do, to to transact with businesses or with delivering of goods or services uh, by different means, Anthony. So and yeah, property. As I said, the only time that you would see uh, uh, people are at the property that you're either that that you're either selling, you're either going you know, you put on the market for rent or a commercial premise that you again, selling or putting it on the market for rent when people want to physically inspect it. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, you bring some interesting points up and I, I know that I've spoken to some people to say that this is now the death of retail, um, uh, potentially. And, uh, you know, the, the hospitality industry in particular might take, I mean, years or might not even ever recover from this once people have habitualized into doing what you're saying, which is, you know, having romantic dinners in and, and things like that. Um, Hey, what's, look, what's your, I've, what? I've become, yeah. Uh, yeah, with this lockdown, may I become? Um, I think I've I've now attained my my second um, star. I've got yeah, three Michelin stars. Of uh, oh, you've, yeah. seen Facebook, okay. you've seen my Facebook page. I can I can cook an awesome meal in under under seven dollars, and that's for yeah. two. Yeah, fantastic! You've probably got your sushi making black belt as well, right? You know. Like. <laughs> So, so I mean, so, I mean, so, so what do you think about that? And what's your advice for someone who might own commercial property, or you know, have a lease for a restaurant and things like that, or if they're looking to sell, or if they're looking to buy? Is that? A, I mean, what's your what's your views on some of that from a commercial? Uh, perspective? The property is so diverse, and the, and it's not just one market; it's um, it's uh, various markets in various areas. So, uh, look in general, I think the uh, I think the indicators that that we're seeing where. Uh, predominantly are uh, 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 for more uh, property falls. Uh, I, I'm dealing with uh, quite a number of um, commercial units at the moment, uh, um, more so in helping um, clients buy 
uh, as opposed to helping clients to uh, to sell. Uh, uh, even in that that, that transition uh, that, that I've made, that I've adopted, and I have been doing so for the last uh, 18 to 18 months to two years, is uh, transitioning from being your typical real estate agent in selling, more so to, uh, as I said, working as a consultant with lawyers, accountants, and uh, and also with clients that want to developers that want to buy land or or clients that want to buy investment properties and the like. So, what we're seeing is that. I think I think the pain's going to get um, is going to get harder to bear. The the indicators uh, are therefore greater falls, and you only have to look at commercial. As I said, I think 40% of the the the, the SMEs are going to realise that that they're probably going to be more effective working from home than uh, than commuting and uh, in having your small offices uh, in in the city centres. And we're going to, I think, what's going to what we're going to see a rise of is going to be more of the what I call the incubators or or, or properties that are commercial properties that are you know at least to for for temporary yeah you know, facilitating temporary meetings and the like. So, but in terms of in terms of um, storage, in terms of retail shop fronts. Hey, you, uh, a lot, of, a lot of more shopping is being done more and more online, and, and and I don't think we're going to get people out of the habit now of shopping online uh, that, that that we've created or or this COVID nineteen has created over the last uh, six eight weeks, and could go on for another uh, four six weeks as well. So it's going to be a, a habit that's not going to be easily broken, and I don't think it can be broken. It's going to be too costly to break or get people to shopping malls. Uh, so I think that's. I think that's now set in concrete. So there's going to be a bit more pain uh, all around with uh, with property values uh, uh, across the board. Yeah, yeah, I hear what you're saying. So I mean, when I first met you, we were in the aftermath of the GFC, and um, I mean, have you have you seen have you experienced other events like this? Uh, you know, in the real estate game, and what you know, what's your educated guess as to how this might might land in a few weeks' time? Uh, in terms of comparing this uh, this downturn to the GFC, or, or uh, any others that you might have experienced, or other other little events that might have happened, black swan type events, you know, that uh, might have come up. Uh, the yeah, look, n not really. I think the uh, I think we were uh, economically the governments have been a lot stronger and a lot, and the economy has been a lot more stable uh, in previous years than what it has <clears throat> than what it currently is. Uh, so uh, I don't think we've been in a situation. We've, we've kind of been in a situation where we've had interest rates uh, down to 50 basis points, let alone 25, and let alone going into into a, uh, um, a, a you know a negative scenario. Uh, I uh, we haven't come across anything like this in terms of in terms of property, in terms of um, uh, recessions that we had to have, you know, in the 90s and. And, and then there's the, the the GFC, which I think we we, we more or less came uh, unscathed, and there was a lot of stimulus uh, thrown into into that recovery. Um, we had we had a lot of you could say we had uh, we still had fuel in the in the tank, but this time around, I, I think um, we've been running on um, on the smell of an oily rag for so many years, uh, uh, and um, and quite frankly, it's it's really it's unprecedented. Is that the lawnmower guy out the front? Oh man, I've got I've got everybody. You're gonna to have to forgive me. I've got somebody at the door now. Take a break, Anthony. Okay. We'll just let Edwin deal with all that for a, for a second, and we'll wait for him to come back. Uh, but look, if you've got some questions for Edwin, there's a few people watching at the moment. Thanks for joining into our first session. Um, if there's some questions you've got for Edwin, look, comment them in. Um, all right, he's, he's back in as well. Yeah, uh, well, one of the one of the down downfall of working from home and having a home office is where you get deliveries guys, you get the lawnmower guy, you get uh, the the milkman, the uh, baker, and the candlestick maker all turning up at once. Yeah, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, they're environmental sounds. And I think, you know, you can buy the CD shortly, COVID-19 environmental sounds. And I think uh, expecting women might be buying these CDs if they go to hospital and, uh, you know, just to, you know, be calm and set the scene a bit, you know. Uh, screaming kids and all of that kind of stuff has all uh, become commonplace now when it comes to uh, COVID-19 and, and how we do business. But 
so, so, so what I really wanted to get to, and maybe not so much for yourself, but if you had, you know, other business owners that you were talking to, and and um, you know, if you can think of, take a go back twelve months, and you told them this was going to happen, what types of things would you be doing differently, and what types of things would you be telling them to do differently? Look, I, I think uh, I think people people have got to. What what would I be doing different if I if I knew this was going to happen twelve months ago? But uh, I guess. Um, 12 months ago, as I said, 18 months ago, I was, I've been so involved in the industry and I've become, I've become um, yeah, highly immersed in the, in, in the industry and commentary as um, uh, a number of your people that are watching, uh, yeah, if, they Google, if they Google my name, they'll see um, uh, yeah, what I've been doing over the last yeah, 10, 15 years, uh, commenting on the, on the industry because I was so immersed, I could see changes already happening. And I think that's what people need to do. They need to, if, no matter what industry you get into, or no matter what industry you're involved with, or uh, uh, that you need to immerse yourself in it to the point where you've got to, you've got to start breaking it apart. And as you know, Anthony, I've spoken with you many a times uh, as to what I could foresee as changes and disruptions in, in many industries. Uh, so you can either, if you're going to be a business operator, you, you really need to be, uh, be, be prepared for any type of disruption. And you need to you need to um, uh, protect yourself uh, for 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 anything, or prepare yourself to be able to either flow with it, uh, or um, you know, or, or, or protect your clientele base, your your territory uh, from uh, from let's say from an invader, an invading um, uh, change. Um, look, change most of the time uh, is positive. We sometimes think that it's um, it's negative because it has at the beginning has an adverse effect. But if you're prepared for it, you can be you, you can turn that negativity into a, in a positive outcome. So what yeah. we've been doing, so what we've been doing uh, for many years, uh, my colleagues and myself, is we've been looking at look, looking at parallel industries that would complement the one that we're working with. And look, and I've known. I've known for for over a decade that if you're just going to stick to one type of business or one type of industry, in, or yeah, you know, so fixated on just one one let's say one carriageway in a in a highway, well, you're going to come unstuck. You're going to derail. The train's going to derail, and that and that's what's happened. But um, so with with us, uh, as I've spoken with uh, with yourself and what you do, as I've uh, shared some of my ideas in wanting to reach out to the industry, in, uh, I call them parallel markets or uh, with regard to technology, and uh, to assist other agents to do uh, to, to, to perform a job better than uh, than what they have been uh, through. You know, let, let's let's simplify it to you know um, rather than just using uh, pen and paper to using technology. Rather than just using, um, um, uh, you know, uh, images using video, uh, rather than just uh, uploading um, photos on a website, upload that you know, um, 3D uh, or you know, or even um, a video or or you know, walk through floor plans and that sort of that uh, that sort of uh, technology. So we have to adopt, um, and that's the only way that. I, I guess that's that's what's allowing me and allowing many of my colleagues that that, that I discuss things with, uh, have, uh, we've able to to cope with this this transition. A lot of people aren't coping, and the reason why they're not coping is because unfortunately they're still stuck in they're still stuck in the nineties or still stuck in the early two thousands. Um, and yeah, so that's that that's just one of the one of the things you've got to immerse yourself. Whatever you're involved with, if you're going to be selling if you're going to be selling sports shoes, well, you got to know. You're going to know the ins and outs, and and what other what's a complementary business that you can that you can have in order to not just sell sports shoes, but whilst you've got the client with you, what else can you can you assist that client with? Is it information? Is it is it knowledge? Is it training? Is it you know it could be affiliate yourself with a with a for example, you could affiliate yourself with a with, with a personal trainer. So you know. Uh, so Anthony, you go and you come and buy uh, sports shoes uh, from me online, and then hey, by the way, Anthony, I notice that you bought you you buying a pair of uh, Nike pumps, whatever. Yeah, you're paying four hundred dollars, and you know you, you don't only just want to uh, you know they they're great shoes, but uh, are you using them for 
this, this, or that, or and if your and if your motive is to because you want to start, you know, getting fit. Well, we have an association and affiliation with with so and so PT services, and because you bought a pair of shoes from us, you've got the first lesson for free. You know, you've just got to look at your parallel businesses that you can complement and and share. So there's going to be a co co hosting, if I could use that term, co sharing, uh, co hosting of. Uh, of the clientele bases or the databases that uh, are effectively your clients. Yeah, I know. We've talked in the past a lot, and what you're uh, sort of reminiscing with me about is that uh, joint venture marketing type relationship that uh, you and I had sort of some some years back too, and what we were promoting. So you know, I think that's a good message for this show too about you know working together with other businesses uh, so that everyone can sort of do well out of this as well. Um, I want to just quickly get to residential property. I know there's a lot of business owners who own property, their own houses, investment properties. They might be, you know, landlords and those types of things too. What's some advice you've got for people sort of in that space if they've got to negotiate with tenants or if they're tenants that have to negotiate? Do you have anything to sort of comment on all of that? Is it a good time to sell? Is it a good time to buy? I mean, in Sydney or in the areas that you know? I know, I can see that it's a difficult, so it's a loaded question, but, you know, take it where you want. As I said, the indicators are showing that uh, uh, property values are going to continue to go down. There's just no, uh, there's no, there are more, there are more indicators to show the values going down than there are, uh, um, you know, stabilising. We're not going to, I don't see a, a V-shaped recovery. I don't see a U-shaped recovery. Uh, you know, if I was to put paint an image, uh, you, you could, you, you, you could perhaps say we've got a, uh, an image of the, the the symbol of the you know, the square root symbol, uh, but the thing is we've got we've got a we, we've still got a long ways to go to hit the bottom before we recover, uh, and that's what uh, yeah. that's the unfortunate thing. When you look at the numbers of what the government has uh, uh, is is has implemented with regard to job keeper uh, allowance, job start allowance, and and government employees, if you if you add all the people that are on the job keeper are under um, the you know, job starter and, and, yeah. and directly employed by the government, uh, guess what? At the moment, you would say that uh, almost 66% of, uh, of the working population is employed by the government if you add them all up because effectively, you know, the government's paying for all, the, for all this. So the, you know, your, your, so it's, it, it, how long can that go on for? How long can, can, um, can can it be sustainable? Um, the, the the figures that have been bantered around in in some of the circles that I discuss things with on Twitter, on uh, you know, and on the platforms that I'm involved with, and uh, and uh, um, uh, you know, in dealing with 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 my business associates. I mean, yeah, I don't think anybody uh, anybody's really that's got uh, a couple of brain cells um, won't be able to see the fact that the unemployment rate is going to go above 15%. We could even hit 20%, 22%, and, and that's going to be devastating. So in terms of recovery, there's a long way to go. There's a, uh, we don't know when the full lockdown um, uh, uh, laws are going to, are going to be lifted. Uh, we, um, we, we're relying and dependent on, um, on, on international travel in terms of uh, students, in terms of, uh, you know, international students, uh, it, in, in terms of the um, uh, tourist tourism, the tourism industry is absolutely being being devastated, and was so before COVID nineteen with 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 the bushfires that we were experiencing, uh, yeah. you know, the drought and everything else. So, uh, if we're talking about airlines uh, going going full steam, um, you know, when is that going to happen? Is that going to you know where the government or the the narrative that's been uh, being bantered around out there in uh, in in the big media is is possibly 12 to 18 months before we before that really kicks off uh, in in earnest. So I think I really think it's a matter of uh, batting down the hatches and and people have got to take stock. Obviously, on a on a one to one scenario, look um, if they reach out, um, you know I'm you know I'm available to give them friendly you know friendly advice but to 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 answer everybody has their own their own needs and their own um individual needs and requirements in order to for 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 me to say but to give it a blanket um yeah yeah i understand yeah because see the, the thing is there's just so many so, so many things that people could be you you could be 
you could be sowing and and then you might have yeah you know, you've got all sorts of implications you've got uh, uh, CGT you know capital gains tax you've got um, but look people just need to you just need to reach out as I uh, if people follow me on Twitter um, they um, if your followers can you know, follow me on Twitter and can uh, direct message me uh, you can you can share my my accounts uh, Anthony and I'm I'm more than happy to give them some friendly uh, spend some uh, yeah 10 15 minutes with them on the phone or give them some friendly friendly advice uh, before they decide to do anything and just yes you know, just hopefully direct them uh, put them in the right direction I've talked uh, a number of people out of selling the properties uh, as opposed to the you know, putting them on the market uh, others um uh, I've, I've advised them to to sell now before before they they lose more in terms of the the equity in the property because of the areas where they're in because of what they're doing and and, and the lifestyle situation that need to change uh, some people can't yeah. wait another five five seven ten years for the recovery others are better off waiting because they're already underwater yeah so you might have already answered the question but I'm just going to note here to ask specifically about first home buyers and then also you know what I like to term the last home buyers right so those about to enter retirement might be downsizing and those types of things or you know we're thinking about that before all of this happens so uh, the first home buyers and then the last home buyers first home buyers I'd, I'd wait uh, I've, I've, I've looked at number I've looked at figures obviously my my patch my um, <clears throat> my backyard is uh, Sydney uh, all over Sydney, North, South, East, and West, and, and, and I've ran some numbers through our models uh, in in various areas, various suburbs, as to what you can you can still buy. All that property values have gone in some areas have gone down <clears throat> already by about 12, 13, 15 percent. What you can buy that yeah. property for, and as to what you can rent property for, uh, are still miles apart. So you know it, it's often the case that you can still rent property in these areas because rental values. A lot of people may not understand and might not realise that rental values in some areas have gone down by up to thirty percent. So, you know, e even if you were, even if you had the money to buy, uh, you're 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 paying you're paying more as an interest only repayment to the bank than what you would in rent these days as well. So, uh, it's an opportunity for people that, uh, you know, first time uh, first time buyers to perhaps rent in the area that they think they want to buy. Uh, spend a year or a year, a year and a half or whatever in that area, <clears throat> in that uh, before they before they really uh, put the roots down. I think it's a great opportunity to do that. Uh, I, I call it, you know, like it's it's like you take a car for a joyride, uh, or no, joyride. You take a car for a test run, a <laughs> test uh, drive, uh, and if you can have the car for a few days, you get you you, know, you realize that you either you either hate it or you you, know, you like it. And, and, this is an opportunity to do that with uh, with a property where you can actually you know, rent a property in in the area that you want to that you think you want to live in, uh, still pay a lot less than what you would be paying the bank interest only, and see if you really like the area, if you really like the um, the, the surroundings, uh, because you're going to be there for you know six months, twelve months. Uh, the last home buyers, uh, last home buyers, well, they're the ones that that. They can't wait another five years for to to for the recovery. There, uh, a, a lot of cases I've been uh, uh, advising them and telling them that look, get out whilst uh, whilst they whilst the values have only dropped, you know, ten percent uh, in some areas or twelve percent, uh, because it's only it's only going to get more painful. There's going to be more property going to be put on the market uh, as as people realise that they can't. Pay the remortgages. They can't. They've lost the business. They're going into voluntary administration or into liquidation. So, more and more jobs are going to be lost. So, therefore, if they get out, the sooner they get out, the sooner they can uh, realise their, uh, you know, the value of the property. The sooner then they can buy, you know, into the retirement villages and the like. Because these people are, this generation is a generation that, that they can't wait another seven, ten. 15 years for the recovery uh, uh, to in order to realize the, the values that they would otherwise uh, realize uh, now or even two you know, two months ago when when values were a lot higher uh, because let's face it they don't have they, they don't have that um, uh, the, the life uh, span or expectancy perhaps uh, they're um, it's you know the aging population that are, that are going into the next phase of their their life which is really retirement um, and 
given the fact that they've also uh, a lot of the superannuation funds have lost a lot of money on the stock market. Uh, banks are in a lot of trouble. You've got uh, Westpac's, you know, been making noise for the last couple of couple of weeks, and so is ANZ. So with all this uncertainty, that's a generation that that they, I feel they have to transact and transact quickly to get out quickly in broad terms, in general terms. Once again, our seek financial advice from your uh, from, from various professionals around. Yeah, yeah, no, that's, there's some good information there. And I know you've, you've been following this COVID-19 thing very closely since uh, inception and uh, probably alerted me to something sort of, uh, what was it, late December or something, early January, when, it, when things were still you know, uh, not been on many people's radars. What do you yeah. what do you feel about what's happening now? I think we, we talked briefly yesterday about uh, the wave two and things like that. Do you have any anything to add on, on things like that and how what people should be expecting? Well, if um, you, you only have to look at what other countries around the world have been doing and have done and have been doing. Obviously, there's there, there's two uh, there, there's two um, two camps now. There's the camp that uh, uh, are advising people to wear masks, and there's a camp that are advising people not to wear masks. There's the camp that 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 are telling you that it's um it, it, it's it only affects the young, and uh, and and it only and there's the other camp that's saying, hey, it's th th this disease is it has a lot more. There's a lot more to it, and that we don't know. Obviously, I sit on the camp that advises everybody to wear masks, um, and and not not because. Not because you're not uh, to stop you from from catching something, but let's say you're an a, a, asymptomatic and and you've got something that, and, and you you know it's really to to stop you spreading your germs uh, more than more than the other way around. So it's being respectful of the rest of the population. Uh, what we've seen is uh, uh, countries around the world, such as Singapore, when they uh, they, um, they 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 lifted their um, the, the lockdown. Um, uh, a lot earlier, and now they're going through through a second wave, and the second wave is 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 a lot um, hitting them a lot harder. What we don't what we don't hear a lot about is obviously the where this whole thing started, which is in China, and and what they're going through. And and unless you've got contacts and connections in China, you're not going to get the full story. Um, you're just going to get the mainstream media, and obviously. Uh, uh, the, there, the, the the numbers will we'll never know how many people actually died there. We'll never know, uh, you know, in its entirety how many families suffered, how many how many groups, not only individuals in families died, but how many uh, family groups died in 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 apartment buildings. Uh, how many apartment buildings got knocked down because of uh, of the infection throughout the, uh, the the plumbing and the sewerage systems. We won't know all this, uh, all, all this information. It's in its in entirety. But what we do know, what I do know right now, is that um, industries haven't gone back you know, uh, as much as what we hear on the mainstream media because the locals that I talk to, the people that I talk to uh, live, uh, yeah, they're on the ground in in a number of the cities there. Um, you know, it, it's really a it's really a show that's been put on for the rest of the world. And they've got the second wave, and they're more scared of the second wave there than what they are of the first, because the first was was controlled relatively, yeah, you know, more controlled. Everybody was conscious of it, but now everybody's uh, a little bit more relaxed, or the younger generation are a lot more relaxed than the, than the older people, because the older generation um, are the ones that went through SARS. They're the ones that went through all the other, uh, you know, um, um, viruses that that um, Ravaged uh, China uh, previously, whereas the younger generation they didn't see that. They, they only heard stories, or they and they become they feel that they're, they're more resilient than than what uh, what they really are. But the other things are that we don't know about and that we don't hear much of is the fact that um, keep in mind that uh, that the China was supplying the the, the world uh, with um, you know, with anything from uh, two dollar items to to uh, you know, cars and, and and other type of machinery and and other products. So if the rest of the world is in lockdown, well, guess what? No manufacturing is happening there. So they're going through an economic uh, economic um, uh, uh, wave there. That's that, that they have they, the locals haven't seen. You've got you've got now got families uh, living in um, yeah two three families living living in one under one roof. 
in order to be able, in order to to cope with the economic downturn that they're experiencing. But we don't hear these things unless you, uh, as I said, unless you're you, you've got people on the ground there. You, you don't get a lot of this. So if we go, if we if we lift this uh, too prematurely now, and I'm mainly talking about the um, the, the eastern side of uh, Australia, uh, New South Wales and Victoria. Um, keep in mind that we're going through what we're we're about to walk into into our, our, our winter, and so you've got these small clusters that are showing up in meat works, in meat plants in in Victoria. You know, another cluster here, another cluster there, and so you don't know who's who's asymptomatic and who's walking around with it. And now we're going to have this this huge confusion of of, of the flu, um, what would otherwise be we'd know as the flu and COVID nineteen. So if you if you've got somebody with all those symptoms, is it COVID nineteen? Is it the flu? Is it, so there's going to be so much uncertainty. Um, but the good thing is, is that the the narrative of the government and and the powers to be that they're not talking about opening up the borders uh, early, and I think that's our saving grace to an extent. But there's still a lot more pain to go through, and I just you know encourage people to protect yourself uh, and and look and and help protect others and and just be mindful because there are yeah you know, simple things that we can do in terms of hygiene, in terms of uh, you know wearing masks, uh, in terms of sanitising and not and keeping that social distance. Uh, uh, you know, um, re regulations and, and be more inclined to to sanitise your workspace, work environment uh, a, a lot more, and, and be more open to that. And that's yeah, moving forward. You know, once even once we're over this COVID nineteen, there'll, there'll be other viruses. And, and hey, it's a good thing. It's it's cleaning up our cleaning up our workspaces and, and workstations as well. Yeah, yeah, as well as the environment at large. Yes, yeah, so there's uh, many positive things I think taken from this. Also, so I mean, is there any other comments you'd like to add? Look, we've got a few people online for our first show. Thank you all for joining us. Um, I'd like to see some interaction. I want to test out the comments. If there's anyone there that'd like to post something, I'm going to do test the comment because no one else is doing it. Is that working? Okay, we've tested a comment. That's great. Is anyone else that'd like to send a question through? But if not, then, look, thanks a lot for joining us for our first show, Edwin. I remember, you know, yesterday I called in in uh, seemingly a bit of a panic because I have a, a few people lined up over the over the coming days. I've probably got a week and a half worth uh, of interviews. Oh, there we got some comments come through. That's great. So that works. Um, and I called you up, and I never, I didn't explain to you what I was doing with the show uh, before about four o'clock yesterday. Uh, and you were driving somewhere, and you know, I, I'd called other people before that, going, "Hey, I need something for tomorrow. I want to go live tomorrow with the first one." Uh, you know, some people went, "Oh, it's too soon. I'm, you know, I'm not free, and all of that kind of stuff." And I remember mentioning to you, "Here's what I'm doing." What, 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 you go, "When are you going to start tomorrow at ten o'clock?" And you're like, "Yep, I mean, give me an hour. <laughs> we'll, we'll test it all out, and we'll go." <laughs> like, wow, this this guy, right? Just jump in there, both feet is brilliant. Yeah, so, and and I think I think that's what look. Um, as, as much as trying, you know, helping you out and, and, and kicking this off, and I think it's a great initiative and in, in getting the business community to talk to each other and share and, and thoughts. So this, I'm just just one person you know, in uh, in Sydney. There's there, there's millions of others that that I'm, I'm sure even I'd be interested to hear what they have to say and how they've coped in different areas. But I guess in, in all this, Anthony, we just have to be ready. Um, you know, an old mentor of mine used to say, uh, "There's there's an opportunity to go and pass you every day. You just have to be ready and await to, uh, to 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 take it. Otherwise, it just passes you by." So, look, appreciate the time. You know, thanks for the for the invite. I think it's a uh, it's a good service, and and the business community can be uh, can be um, uh, become recluse, or can be uh, yeah, we can uh, even even with this lockdown, we can be. Feel, feel that we're, we're alone, but there's a big wider world out there and people like yourself that want to do something good and, and reach out and create these forums. I, as I said, I I, um, I share a lot, I discuss a lot in other, you know, with, things, with, with different people in other forums. Uh, but, um, yeah, like, uh, I think it's a great initiative and I appreciate the opportunity. Yeah, thanks a lot. It means a lot to me, buddy. But uh, I think you've said, I mean, you've really sort of had a lot of input here and some, and some great information. I think uh, in a few weeks' time, we might invite you back again to discuss sort of how things have progressed and, you know, how things have changed. And, um, I, and, I'll so, have, and I won't have the lawnmower man outside this time. 
<laughs> yeah, that might be a good idea as well. So, you know, that brings us to the end of our first episode. And I think there's, um, you know, a lot more people that we'll be talking to in the coming days. Tomorrow, we've got Greg Haysom from uh, Exact Computers in Wodonga, Victoria. So getting another perspective from an IT uh, services businesses in a regional area uh, and how things are being affected down there, uh, what he's doing and, and uh, to, to pivot and, uh, you know, what, what his outlook on the on the whole situation is so if you if, if you like the conversation and, and you're into these types of things and you think it could be a benefit for you I, you know like you were saying Edwin, you know the, what what i see is uh, you know in, in this isolation there's a lot of business owners who feel even more or further isolated i think you know even in general when, when people aren't locked down you know being in small business for yourself can be quite isolating because there's not generally a lot of people to talk to that's why networking events and you know things platforms like bni and bbg and the rest of them out there you know, sort of do so well and have their purposes because they, they, they provide that platform. So, you know, with this, you know, I think even in what we've been doing in the past, sometimes you get a few ideas and it's like a combination lock and you get the first number, the second number, the third number, another idea, you have a conversation with someone, you watch a TED talk, and then I'm hoping we can provide, you know, one of those combinations along the way. And sometimes it only takes that one to then unlock, you know, the ideas and inspiration that sort of people might be looking for at this time. So, uh, yeah. Thanks a lot for joining us. Yeah, thanks for supporting the show and supporting what we do. And um, thanks for everyone for, for listening in and uh, testing the comments. We look to do more and, and join us tomorrow at 10 o'clock with uh, Greg Hayson. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Cheers.